Hey everybody, welcome to the Gym Masters Show, Entertainment Lifestyle Celebrity Talk Show Series. How's everybody doing today? Hope you guys are doing well, and thanks so much for joining us, making us a part of your day. We've got an extraordinary guest who's joining us. If you would like to participate while the show is on, you can. If you subscribe to the YouTube channel, we got something special for all the subscribers, and thanks to all of you who have subscribed and who are subscribing, maybe even right now, to our YouTube channel, Gym Masters TV. Uh, you can comment in the Lovety Hall chat room. we got a Lovety Hall chat room that's available. You see it to the side of the screen on your YouTube channel there, or our YouTube channel, Gym Masters TV. And you can have an opportunity to actually interact with one another, comment, say hello, and uh, celebrate all the cool stuff we're doing as we're approaching almost 1,000 episodes in some three years of our Entertainment Lifestyle Celebrity Talk Show series. Hope you guys are doing well. Busy day for me as always. Radio shows, TV shoots, uh, on stage, in studios, lots of running around, doing what I love, loving what I do. And hopefully you are as well. If this is your first time watching the Gym Master Show Live series, hey, it's good to have you with us. We appreciate you being with us. Spread the word. Tell everybody about our series. You can also binge watch all the episodes. There are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds archived in the JMS uh, archives on our YouTube channel, Gym Masters TV. So check it out. We welcome everybody, all the faithful JMS loveties that watch from around the world. Uh, we welcome everybody in the United States, Canada, all throughout North America, South America, Europe, Africa, Asia, Australia, New Zealand, all over this uh, big blue marble. It's good to have you with us. I want to dive right in because we've got an amazing guest who's joining us from Los Angeles, from Hollywood, California. He's a terrific actor, producer. He's also a competitive elite tennis player as well. Connor Dean is joining us here on the Gym Masters uh, Show series. And we're going to chat with him. He is uh, all excited to be here. We've been putting this together. And, you know, he's best known for his breakout role as Butch the Bully in the Cool Cat movies starring Eric Estrada and Vivica A. Fox. The characters reached cult status, creating video views in the millions, along with a multitude of fan pages and memes. Connor was nominated for two Young Entertainer Awards for his work in Cool Cat and his recurring role in Fox's hit drama, 911, starring the incomparable Angela Bassett and Peter Kraus. His leading role in Jingle Trail, streaming on Amazon Prime, garnered him another nomination and win for Best Lead Actor. He also has two podcasts, two on major platforms, sports and pop, uh, pop culture podcast, In or Out with Connor Dean on the Believe Network and co-host of the horror film podcast, Clowns Are Us, with Broadway actor Max Bartos. It's one of the fastest growing film reviews on Apple Podcasts and taking deep dives into horror films from the decades. He's also a serious regular, series regular in the TV series Veg Head. He's also a philanthropist and celebrity ambassador using his platform to help such organizations as Starlight Children's Hospital, St. Baldrick's, and more. He's also the CEO of his own production company, Penny Arcade Pictures. I love that name. And that has several projects in pre-production too. And recently, Connor walked the runway for several designers at NYFW. And outside of the entertainment industry, Connor, as I mentioned, is an elite competitive tennis player training 20 plus hours per week. And in his off time, he enjoys gaming and playing piano 
and drawing and so much more. Really cool to have him here on the show. We've got lots to talk about today. <laughs> a real pleasure. If you guys want to comment during the show, feel free to do that. Let's welcome Connor Dean to the Jamaster Show from Los Angeles, California. Connor, welcome to the show, my friend. Thank you for having me. <laughs> oh, it's a real pleasure. <laughs> I thought I was a busy guy. You've got a lot going on, huh? Yeah, and it, sometimes it can be a little stressful, but I've learned how to be able to manage my my schedule with everything that I do. Absolutely, yes, and and we were putting that together with uh, you know the timing of getting you in and on the show because I'm so busy and you're so busy, and I'm glad we were able to put it all together and link it all up. How did you? What inspired you initially to want to go into entertainment and to acting and into the arts early on as a kid? So uh, when I was younger, my brother was actually an actor before me. And so we moved from Florida to uh, L.A. for him so he could take acting classes and be like, be in the business like he wanted to. But I was always being like drug to the uh to the audition so i had to go with them and then at one point i was just like if i'm going to the auditions i might as well try out for them so then i started to slowly get into it and then i found out that this was something that i really enjoyed to do and it's something that i've made a lot of friends in and i want to make it like a serious thing in my life so i found a point where i was just like i want to keep on doing this and so i committed fully to it that is so cool. And you really did. I mean, as I mentioned at a, at a young age, we got some cool shots here too that people might uh, recognize as well, which is fantastic. Uh, what would you consider like the very, one of the first door opening opportunities for you that sort of launched the career and people started really noticing how good you were and wanting to bring you in on projects? I think my my first like real breakout role was uh, on the Cool Cat series as Butch the Bully that really like exploded everything as everyone took like my character and made a bunch of memes about it and I would see it all over like uh, social media and I'm like wow this is this is really happening so then after that like it it really went up from there and then i got my role in 911 and that was uh amazing to work on and now i even got like some things that i'm working on myself when you when this whole thing happened with cool cat and you know being the superhero when you when you are you know when you're involved in a production like that and and i say mention some of the people that are involved in that production as well. Eric, Eric Estrada, of course, people know from many shows, Chips, of course, too, <laughs> yeah. back in the 80s and 70s. Um, when you got that role, I mean, what was that like? That had to be, speaking of Cool Cat, that must have been real cool on its own. It, it was really cool like being able to go on the set and and see uh, Eric Estrada and Vivica K. Fox, which they are wonderful to work with. I, I loved working with them and I do it again in a heartbeat. They are the nicest people I've ever met. And it was just a really cool experience to be like, hey, I've seen these people on TV and on movies and I'm actually getting to work with them on something. So I think that was just something that always stuck with me, an experience that it, it, that's never left me. Just being able to work with two people that I've seen before through some of my favorite shows and movies. Were you always uh, a buff when it came to television and movies? Was it something that you always enjoyed, even as a kid? Were you always watching all the TV shows and following all the movies and the actors and actresses along the way? I, I've always been like a real movie buff and uh, and loving of TV shows. I even like I found out now that my favorite TV shows are actually like the older ones that I used to watch when I was a kid. So I used to watch a lot of Friends and oh, uh, yeah. and Seinfeld. And those are like two of my favorite shows. And then like I've always grown up watching Star Wars so that that grew my my liking of the sci fi genre of movies. And ever since like I've been watching those, I've. I've tried to watch as many movies as I can and try to learn as much about them, what they do behind the scenes, how they get certain shots. And it's been a really, really fun thing for me to do. 
So when you were working on Cool Cat with the great casts and the producers and on all those great adventures, um, what was what was that like? What was a what was a day like working on that? That must have been it must have been a cool experience. Yeah, it, it was really cool. We we tried to have a lot of fun on the set. Even when we weren't on camera, we'd be out like on our phones together, me and the other other people, and we'd be like chatting about things that we love to do. And then as soon as we would get on uh get on camera, our mindset would switch and we'd go right to okay, this is our job now. Let's do this. And it we kept it professional while also having like a fun, light light lighthearted uh time through it and i think that's what really like uh solidified that it was a, a fun experience for me you know i mentioned too that uh you are you know you're a producer you have your own production company would you say that early on were you watching what producers were doing and the directors and the camera people were you sort of you know, I've always done that. And that's why I wear a lot of hats in the industry. Were you always soaking it all up and getting sort of turned on by watching, not just being in the forefront, you know, as, as the actor, you know, as, as Bush the Bully and Cool Cats, but also you were soaking up what you were seeing about the process, about how they were creating this. Was that something that was happening for you as well? As a kid, I would always ask as many questions as possible even even if it like was too many questions i was always curious about everything so i would really try to ask everyone from like the director or the cinematographer like hey why why did you choose this shot or like what what we do in this instance so i think asking those questions really helped me learn a lot more about the industry and it got me interested in the uh, off camera side of of the industry as well because i had a lot of experience uh, being on camera but i want to learn more about what it's like to be off camera which is really great because it gives you a full you know well-rounded view of how all the puzzle pieces fit and how it all comes together yeah, yeah which which is fantastic um going back to uh to cool cat you know being like i said in something like that all of a sudden the name is now known even more and people like, Oh, I, you know, I love the character. I want more that really sort of launched things even further for you. Didn't it? It, it did. Like I still have people nowadays are like, Oh my God, uh, I love cool cat. Like uh, the person that I am co-hosting the, my horror podcast with Max Bartos, he, before even like meeting me, loved Cool Cat and knew what it was and loved, loved my character. So we always joke about that now, how he's like, oh, I get to work with, with my favorite character. And I just think that's funny how now the character I did, like not only did it skyrocket my career, but it also like left an imprint on, on some people, even like something that I did that long ago. It's amazing, isn't it? Right. A lot of people growing up with it too, and being inspired by it. Um, what are some of your favorite moments from, from on set that you recall? I think one of my favorite moments was when I first got on set and I went up to uh, Vivica A. Fox and I was just like, oh, my God, I'm, I'm such a huge fan. Uh, can I get a picture? And like I I could barely like hold it together. And she was just like, oh, oh yeah, yeah, sure. And oh, my God, I can't wait to meet like, like to work with you and basically asking me all these questions. And it was such an experience for me to be able to chat with someone like like her about like just everyday things that was something that i didn't realize could happen when i was that young i'm like i didn't think you could go up to like some some of your favorite like actors or actresses and just be able to just talk with them so that was just a really cool thing for me to be able to do you know the character uh reached cult status creating as i mentioned video views in the millions along with a multitude of fan pages and memes and you were nominated for two Young Entertainer Awards for your work in Cool Cat, which is amazing, huh? 
it was it was an experience and i was shocked to be able to be nominated i was so happy to be a part of the yas it's one of my favorite things to be able to do just go there and be able to support all of my friends that are in the business that are also nominated so when i heard that i was nominated i was like oh my god i i, I can't believe that my work was good enough to be able to be nominated for this thing <laughs> so it was it was it was really cool for me to be able to see like this this thing that i did is good enough to be able to be nominated for an award which is incredible. And this, of course, then leading to uh, 911 on Fox. Tell us about that transition. How did that, obviously, a little bit different than Cool Cat, <laughs> but you know, it's a good place to sort of hone your skills and develop your acting chops as well. How did that opportunity come your way as well, Connor? When I got the audition for it, I, I immediately like, did what I could to study the show even more. Like before I watched the show, I love 911. I think it's really cool how they're able to show the disasters on screen. So when I got that role, I'm just like, I really want to be able to have this opportunity to work on this on this TV show. So I did what I could to uh study what what people how people act in the show. And then when I got to the audition, I did what my best to to do as best as I could in the audition and uh, they loved what I did and they were just like, yeah, you're perfect for this role. We, we want you. And it was such an exciting thing for me to, to be able to get that call that I'm in one of my favorite shows like that. And let's just say I didn't sleep that night after. <laughs> It was, it was cool. You were right. I'm sure you were like, you probably didn't sleep for uh, several nights after, right? <laughs> yeah. It, it was that, that call like kept on replaying in my head, like, oh yeah, you're, you're in the show. You, you got it. And it was just, it, it was crazy for me. Like it was almost unbelievable. What was it like being on set? You know, cause some of the topics that they hit upon, you know, get really intense. It was it was really cool to be on that set. Everyone was amazing to work with. I loved uh, all of my co-stars and the director, the cinematographer. Everyone was really nice. And I worked on the uh, the earthquake episodes. Yes. So I got to be able to see how how they do like an earthquake like style disaster in a show like this yeah. so it was really cool to see how they had like the debris everywhere and they'd even pat us down with uh dust like to make it look like we were just coming out of a fallen building yeah and that dust like it it was so hard to get off <laughs> but yeah. it, it helped to to show like the idea of like these these people barely made it out like it it's a really big disaster so it's cool to see how they how they were able to change everything use cgi to show how much that earthquake affected everything and the mixture of that cgi with the practical effects that they used it's really incredible, isn't it? How they're able to pull that off. Some of the things that they use sort of behind the scenes to create the actual effects as if, you know, what we're witnessing on TV or in the movies is, is real. It gives you that effect that you're actually a part of it and it's real, right? Yeah. It, it was crazy because we, we shot it at the W hotel. So when we were doing it, I'm like, I don't know how they're going to make this busy Hollywood seem like it just had a, a huge like earthquake disaster because i'm like yeah they decorated the w hotel but i don't know how they're going to make everything else look look like it was just destroyed so then when i watched the final project i'm like oh my god they really just use cgi to make it seem like everything was affected so not only did they use it to make the w hotel look more like destroyed from the earthquake but they used it to get rid of all the people cars and a lot of the buildings that were in hollywood for that for that scene and i think that was crazy for me to be able to think about that how i went from a from onset seeing a busy street to then going and watching the show to see that it's no longer that that same street as when we were filming that's pretty intense on many levels. And then, of course, Jingle Trails comes along. Tell us about that. So that was a cool experience uh, being able to do. I got to work with uh, 
some really great people the person that played santa claus he he was fun he always like had so many different jokes and jingle trails i thought was a cool story about how these two kids like just find santa in in his vacation time in the summer because it's something you never really think about like what is santa doing does he ever have a a summer vacation almost so i thought having to see like these two kids discover that and be able to learn more about him was a really cool idea and i'm glad that i got to work on that that project what was it like what was the the set experience being on that one too so that that set experience it was cool because we got to be in an outdoor like we were in a woods environment like we were almost hiking yeah. and it it was it was cool to be able to see how we were able to scout which locations would look better for the for the screen like we found a cool pond like in river like small river that we were able to cross and i thought that was cool to be able to see how how you can mix like this real life environment and be able to find the certain angles that you can use to make it so it looks uh, as great as you want it to be on that set having that river with the mix of the of the trees being able to see how that looked on camera and i got to talk to the cinematographer about it all and it was it was really cool to see that side of it it's amazing yeah when you talk to the cinematographer because that's a whole other education isn't it <laughs> yeah it, the cinematography side of filmmaking i i learned a lot about it in my cinematography class and it, it uh, it's crazy to see how much actually goes into it. Like some people don't don't know how you uh, have to be able to choose which lenses. Like if you want a certain look, then you got to go with this lens. Or if you want this shot, you want to use like this type of of lens with this shot. And it, it it's really cool to be able to think about like, hey, I want this shot, but how can I be able to produce that shot? well i'm going to need to get this lens and be able to do this type of shot so that that was cool for me to learn that in that class uh so what how long did it take to actually film you know shoot all that and film the entire thing uh jingle trails took only a couple of days to film because we didn't really have to change locations we were all at the same location so we were able to shoot the scenes really quickly and and luckily like we didn't have any like problems on set everything was good everyone like knew their lines knew their jobs so it went really uh, really fast because of that and i do wish it was a little longer because i wanted to work with all those people again you do huh yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah so if they're listening <laughs> it was quite a project on on many different levels and uh you know what's cool about all this is how well received these productions are that you've been a part of which is uh you know you're picking some really really cool stuff huh yeah and i'm hoping because i've started uh writing more scripts as well so i'm hoping to produce something that people can enjoy just as much as those projects and i'm hoping to to write something in the horror genre to be mm -hmm. able to to show some thrill for for some people and i just want to be able to create things that people can enjoy in their free time and be able to watch over and over again and still have that same feeling of when they first watched it now is this part of that tell us about this uh this is kind of cool this logo here yeah so that's the logo for my podcast with max bartos called clowns are us uh, two clowns yeah. talk about horror and uh that's a reference to the the movie which is one of our favorite horror movies uh killer clowns from outer space it's one of the lines from the film and this uh this logo shows both of our favorite horror movie icons him being the phantom of the opera and and mine being Ghostface from scream so we wanted to be able to put that together in sort of uh, an uh, old looking vibe and then i love the touch that we had them holding the microphone and it's almost like they're the ones talking throughout the podcast. That is cool, huh? Has horror been something that you've always, you know, enjoyed? And what are some of your favorite, maybe some of the iconic uh, horror films over the years that you've really enjoyed? Horror movies have always been something that I, I have enjoyed. I first got into it. My first horror movie was actually Scream. That's mm. what got me into the genre. And I think it was really cool and interesting to see that and how they like 
how they joke about all the rules of slasher movies and all that. And that got me interested in all the other ones when they're watching the TV and watching Halloween. That's what got me to watch Halloween and being able to now see the difference between uh, slasher movies and psychological horror movies is really cool. Like being able to see the difference between Scream and a movie like Hereditary, which doesn't really focus a lot on blood and gore, but it focuses more on that psychological side of of what is going on in the in the movie. I, I really like being able to see the different subgenres and being able to analyze how each one is different. And I think one of my favorite horror movies right now that has come out this this year was uh, Scream 6. But there was also a, another really good one that just came out. Uh, Stephen King, it, it was it's called The Boogeyman. Mm. And that that is a really, really creepy movie. And if anybody loves horror movies, that one is a must watch because it is it is creepy the way they shoot it and all the shots using the darkness hiding the boogeyman it, it it's just amazing did you ever you probably saw the original exorcist i would imagine huh yeah 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 that, that is that is a movie that i i also really like the way that they do the shot of her rising from the bed and the, the, her head spinning and it, it's one of those also called classic movies that if you're a fan of horror movies that you you should see because it's one of those that defined a certain genre of horror as well. Of course, then there's all the Friday the 13th movies too. And Kevin Bacon was in, I remember uh, that as well. And and that, that's just the, and the Halloween franchise, which is extraordinary. Jamie Lee Curtis and company really absolutely amazing and then you know there's the uh there's the slasher you know the texas chainsaw massacre types then there's also the psychological thrillers where where you lean more towards like the hitchcocks and that type of thing yeah. where maybe you're not necessarily seeing blood per se but you are envisioning what's under the bed what's in the closet Who's following me? What's that shadow that I see? Do you love the psychological thrillers as well? The ones that make you think um, and just draw you in as well? I, I do like those types because for me, I like to analyze everything about what I'm watching or what I'm doing. So be able to think like, oh, well, logically, that would be really cool if it was here, if the monster was there. And be able to think, well, what if they were here? And seeing that what if factor of like watching movies like uh the witch and and hereditary scene like oh my god it's crazy to to think that this this scene like it's bumping up in intensity but we may never actually see anything scary and that's the thing that they're trying to get you is that they they are thinking that you're going to predict something scary when nothing scary is really going to happen and i think that uh staying in somebody's mind is what really gives them the thrill factor of like oh my god is something going to happen and i i like when when films be able to do that and yeah. other examples of like those psychological movies are like jordan peele's movies yes like, we get out like the the way that they shoot that you don't really see anything that graphic but the idea of what that family is doing sticks in your mind and it's and it just uh digs at you like oh my god th this is crazy that they're doing that there used to be a series on abc that was in the 70s and a lot of them are on youtube now and it was called movie of the week and they would have a lot of these movies that were made specifically for television with all the legendary actors of the time starring in them and a lot of them were these psychological thriller movies and it used to be on abc and it's called movie of the week tonight on movie of the week disaster or this or that and really really cool and you could see some of those uh they, i think somebody's uploaded like a ton of them on on youtube um talk about talking about psychological thrillers also twilight zone just always with the twisted endings you know no matter how many yeah. times i've seen those the original of course rod serling original 30 minute or sometimes hour they had some a few that were an hour as well um episodes iconic yeah they they really are i actually have like the dvd box set that has all of them 
and i i can even like if someone mentions twilight zone like i can think back to all the episodes i've watched like the the one that i know it's probably not the exact number but it's like terror from a ten thousand feet above mm-hmm. like the one about the the creature on the wing of the plane yes with and then William the, shatner yeah that that's always been one of my favorite ones and i think that is also a good example of psychological like you're watching this guy see this creature but as soon as someone bring like he brings someone to go see it he's not there anymore and you're wondering like is is the creature gonna pop up again and then they have that one jump scare of him at the window and i i think that's that's really interesting you could probably call that one of the first like horror tv shows that showed uh psychological elements with it i love the one too where they think that the um the earth is moving further and further um or closer closer to the sun when in reality it was a nightmare that the the girl was having and it's actually moving further further <laughs> away from the sun and we are at risk of freezing to death but the whole time he leads you to believe this and it turns out just same thing with the one with to be ma- something else it's totally different twisted ending masks too and then they take the uh, the greedy family and then the grandfather passes away and they you know you can get my millions if you uh just wear the masks till midnight and he passes away in the wheelchair i mean i don't want to give these away in case somebody didn't see these but they take the masks off and their faces are formed like the masks and genius to think of these things it, it it's really cool to see like how they have this commentary. many episodes yeah that are so different they even had one about like a person that walks into a diner and sees like this this box that like, grants wishes like one of those old the music with the quarters you yeah, put the, in and yeah. yes yeah and then they they had another one like about a doll that tr- like tries to kill the mother or the father and like I can picture my name one is scene. Tina. Yeah, and that, I that's don't the one. like you. And that was starring <laughs> Telly Savalas, who played Kojak uh, in the uh, on CBS in the seventies. Uh, but this, of course, was way before that. This was in the sixties when that was done. That's a cool one too. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to say what happens in case people haven't seen that episode. But and yeah, he tries everything he can to get rid of this doll that his uh, step child has and he hates it and and he only just wants he, to get rid of it <laughs> only he hears it talking right so it makes it, him seem like he's crazy but yes he's not. and the black and white and the shadowing and the time period just all you know i know there's been many versions later of it um in color and everything there's something about the original with the shadowing and the black and white that really adds to the depth of the mood and and the feeling that you're getting uh, from it, which is really something yeah. quite quite special. Hey, look what we uh, we dug up here, Connor. Tell us about this shot. <laughs> Boom! So that that <laughs> is uh, from one of my one of the times I walked in New York Fashion Week. How cool and is that, huh? It it was it's really cool to be able to do that to be able to travel to New York, like one of the biggest fashion fashion oh, states. Yeah. I, I love it. I'm actually going back in September for it. Oh, cool. So I'll be able to be able to walk some more. But being able to do that, I feel like seeing the, another side of uh, the industry is, is really interesting for me to see how the the models get ready and see mm-hmm. the process of getting the clothes and all that. And it, it sometimes for me, it feels really calming to be able to walk just down the runway, not have to worry about anything. You just walk, pose, walk back. And I, I, I found a real liking to it. Yeah. And so now I've been doing it a lot more and I hope to do it even more later on. Tell us about this shot here. So that one is I love I love that brand. It's Ete Alexandra and it is one of the most comfortable like clothes i've ever worn Mm. that that hood and that jacket are so comfortable to wear that i feel like i could just sleep in them right (laughs) they're they're so soft yeah it's it's so soft and and the material they use is is just perfect and i love walking for them like every time i go you know, in addition, we're, we're focusing so much like on the acting, but uh, you started your own production company too, right? Tell us about that. Congratulations. 
Thank you. I, yeah, I started a production company with my brother. It's called Penny Arcade Pictures. We named it after my great grandfather, who uh, we used to call Papa Penny, and he loved the little uh, Penny Arcade. So we wanted to put that little idea into into the name, and we're hoping to put a lot of uh, different shows, movies, and other projects under that production company, and be able to produce things that we really care about and that we want to put out there in the world. And we we have a lot of things that are are almost ready to go that we're we're just waiting on a few other things and then we're about to send them out. That's really cool. Huh? And paying homage to your grandfather in that special way is really something really, really nice. Congratulations. And, you know, we'll keep a definite lookout for those productions and cool things that are happening. In addition, uh, tennis, I love to play tennis too. And I have a friend of mine who is a, a tennis pro and he teaches kids and he lives and breathes it. His family has lived and breathed it. And when did you get first introduced to, to tennis? Cause you're an elite competitive player. So as a kid, I played, I did the usual thing that you do. You play all the different sports. You try to find the one you like. I actually started because I was born in Florida and our backyard was a golf course. So I started with golf. Not too shabby, huh? Backyard I, is the golf course. <laughs> I, I know. It was just a great thing to be able to go out and just play golf. And I loved doing it, but it felt like something I, I didn't really feel like I could do uh, my entire life. And then I tried playing tennis and it was something that I felt like I could really actually do that I really enjoyed doing. So I started playing more and more of it. And then when we moved to, to California, I did more, found more clinics and my love for it was like growing, growing and growing. And I, and I told myself, I want to get really good at this. I want to try to do whatever I can. So I played tournaments. I was able to play on my high school team and I I've been playing it for uh i probably about 10 over 10 years now wow. and it and it's an amazing thing for me to do and i still play golf too so i that that's never went away that's but still tennis, right exactly tennis are you is gonna stay with me are you an ocean person growing up I, you know i grew up on the east coast but the northeast and we have family in florida and we just got back actually from florida you know that's that whole north the, the snowbirds you know six months up northeast and then they they go to florida um do you love the ocean are you an ocean person i i do like the ocean i'd be it's sometimes calming to watch the waves be Isn't able to it? like crash and then go back and I feel like sometimes when I'm like uh, stressed, even at home, I'll tell like my my Alexa to play the sounds of the ocean to be able to try to calm me because that sound is there's something about it that really does relax me. And sometimes we'll go to a trip on the beach and I will just sit there in the sand, just be able to close my eyes, listen to the water. And sometimes I'll even go into the water and just float there. And I love being able to just do that. That's what I do too. And uh, matter of fact, the first time I learned to boogie board was uh, when I graduated from college. Uh, we went out, my college roommate and I, who's a sports reporter up in Boston, um, we went out to California and we went to San Diego and then up to LA and everything else. And we had another yeah. friend who graduated the year before us. And he said, well, I'm going to take you all around, show you, you know, Beverly Hills, show you everything. And they said, did you want to go boogie boarding? And at that time, you know, I wasn't sure what boogie boarding was. I knew surfing and you know, we've done a lot of that on the ocean and did it and did it in San Diego. And it was really, really cool. Have you done that boogie boarding? Uh, yeah, I, I love boogie boarding. It, it's just a way to be able to surf. Like if you're not able to stand up or if you're too afraid of, of standing up, and it's cool to be able to go out there. And sometimes like me and my brother would go really far out. And this mm -hmm. one time we went so far out that we were on our boogie boards and a seal actually came and knocked my brother off of his boogie board. Wow. And I and he lost his glasses because of that. <laughs> and so we laugh about it. He's like, I don't want to go that far out anymore. And I, and I said, I'm pretty sure the seal was laughing at you as he was leaving. Good thing it was a seal. <laughs> and not I know the other S, you know, <laughs> uh, and good thing the current, you know, like a riptide or something didn't pull you guys out. The very first time I did it, um, 
in San Diego. I don't know if it was La Jolla or if it was Mission Beach in San Diego, but the waves, you know, the Pacific, the waves can be pretty intense. Yeah. And uh, there was a wave and we were getting ready to ride the wave, but there was none of us could see there was a bigger wave just behind it hidden. So the second wave came and, and sort of knocked everybody off their boards, but it took me and I'm hanging on to this uh, half surfboard boogie board and it actually pulled me down. And I remember like banging my head on the bottom of the ocean. <laughs> and I said, I am not going to let go of this boogie board because the boogie board is what's going to shoot me back up it's you know it wants to float so yeah. i held on to that boogie board for dear life and boom i came popping out of the water it was it was amazing and then a wave just sort of brought me in with the boogie board and i was like holy cow let's try like, it again I'm, I'm holding on to it i'm, I'm holding not letting go that, of it that's i'm down there and i'm like gee that's the bottom <laughs> <laughs> How far down are we? But the boogie board just sort of shoots you right up, which is uh, which is cool. Um, getting back to the tennis, I mean, have you uh, thought of teaching it as well? Do you love it so much? I've actually have started teaching tennis. Cool. So um, after I graduated high school, I decided to help uh, my high school coach out. Uh, and now I help her coach some of the high school on the boys and the girls side during their seasons. And it's really cool to be able to to teach what I also love to do. And it, I found out it's something I'm actually good at as well. So I've been doing that more and more. I now coach uh, clinics uh, with one of my friends on Saturdays. And it is it's a really fun thing to be able to do because you get to see like your words are being able to help these people grow with their skill and get better at this sport. That's so true, right? Uh, it, it's exactly what it's like. I know. Uh, how are you? Do, how are you able to, you know, balance everything? All the different things that you do, uh, school. I mean, everything. So I try to think about like what are the things that I have to do, like the mandatory things. I schedule those in first, and I'm like, okay, if I have that, and then I could uh, practice tennis at this time and be able to squeeze that in. And then usually, whatever time I have left, I'll do other things like writing scripts, drawing, or like doing my school. And sometimes I'll I'll even do school in my in the car when we're driving, so I can optimize <laughs> that time because I like to optimize like being able to think like okay I'm in the car for two hours on my way to practice I can do this assignment then and do this then and it's just all about for me figuring out where all the the puzzle pieces fit. And of course, one of those mandatory things that uh, you arranged things for was coming on the Gym Master Show series, right? <laughs> it, it was. It was on like my schedule. Now I'm like, I, I'm doing this. I'm getting it in here. And I made sure to schedule everything away from it. <laughs> so I didn't have anything that could conflict with it because I did. I want to be on the show and I want to be able to be able to chat with you because I know before we the last one that we scheduled didn't work out so well. That's it, right? But it all, you know, tenacity, that's this industry. It all just works out if you, you're patient and you just keep going at it, which is what it really- Push through. Push through. You're also a series regular on VegHead. Tell us about that. That's cool too. So it's a, it's a show that's in pre-production right now that we are writing more scripts with. And it's a really cool show about two vegan chefs and- and the first episode is about how I'm their booking agent. I book a butcher for their vegan show and how all the insanity happens. And it's just uh, it's almost like the the office vibe about how they film with that 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 style of filming. And it's just a, a real fun and funny show about just two vegan chefs trying to uh, trying to make their show great. And, and then one booking agent who's trying their best. <laughs> <laughs> trying to those booking agents they work so hard don't they trying to make all the pieces sort of come together and uh well, i'm also the janitor so i got two i got two jobs in that in that you did huh <laughs> yeah so i'm the the booking agent the booking agent in the show is also a janitor wow so uh when what's the story on that when do they anticipate that coming out 
so we're anticipating it coming out really soon we've got uh episodes in the bank and we're just trying to figure out how we want to put it out into the world but we are really excited for people to see it, it it's going to be a really fun fun show for people to watch and i'm excited to see how it all turns out that is so cool uh i mentioned too that you're also in addition to the acting and the producing and the tennis and schooling and all you're also a philanthropist and a celebrity ambassador and you use your platform and your abilities which which i've done as well so i can really plug into this you know helping uh, charities and fundraising and helping causes that you believe in that really need you know the light shed on them you've helped starlight children's hospital and saint baldrick's and so much more tell us about some of that philanthropic work that you do and why you really enjoy doing it Con. so i like to keep my instagram my social media all positive because i feel like there's a lot of negativity in the world that we need to try to find the positive things of life and and try to keep everything all upbeat so i use my instagram and my all my other social media for that purpose and i love to show people like hey you like it's always great to give back to your community even if it's a small thing like you're still making a big impact so i like to to volunteer at different charities like St. Baldrick's uh, Children's Hospital. And I even like to do like some beach cleanups to be able to show people that like sometimes even the smallest thing can help make a, a big difference in the world. And I really like seeing how much like me just go into these events and helping these kids makes them smile. And that and that deep inside makes me smile as well. Paying it forward, giving it back. That's what it's truly all about. Uh, good work on that. Uh, you know, that's really good on you to do that kind of work. And again, I can plug into that easily. Um, you know, when you have time to do it, if you, I encourage everybody to do it. You know, the world can really use more positivity. And you and I are on the same wavelength. That's my uh, MO too. I'm all about positivity, bringing people together, uh, not extreme this, extreme that, just bringing everybody together and, and let's, you know, play off each other and collaborate and create yeah. and just enjoy life because life is so short and it goes by so quickly, you know. Enjoy and, all uh, the th good things in your life instead of dwelling on all the bad things. Where do you think that positivity and that inspiration comes from? Is it your, was that instilled in you early by your family? I think uh, it was a little by my family, but also some of it was seeing uh, a lot of my favorite celebrities giving back as well, like seeing them go to these charity events as well and seeing how that how that makes them so happy, how it makes the kids happy. And I feel like I, I told myself that I want to do something like that. I want to be able to make like a lot of people happy. And so I was doing whatever I could to try to help my community like and figure out ways that I could help around to make that big impact. And mm. so I also, that's why I used my Instagram to help show like, Hey, you, you could even just all, picking up like just one water bottle, like and throwing it away could help uh, a lot in, in, uh, on our earth. It's so true. I know somebody who takes all those water bottles and all the plastic from the ocean and it turns them into works of art actually takes toys floating. I mean, all kinds of, it's unbelievable what you'll find on beaches or in the ocean and takes all the plastic and forms incredible art and sort of gives it a second life, um, which I think is so important, huh? Doing things it, like that. It is really important. And I feel like showing like these people showing uh, these artists showing people that you can even make works of art from like, the these tra this trash like you can turn a bad thing into a really great thing that's right uh, helps helps to show people how much like they can actually do and seeing the creativity of these people like turning these water bottles into these big sculptures is, is really cool to, and and i do like the impact that they do have being able to show people that yeah He's just taking these small water bottles and he's turning those those things into something that makes people happy and, and helps the community. And I, I think that's a really great thing. I mentioned, too, in addition to everything else, you also like to draw and you like to play piano. Tell us about that. 
So yeah, I've grown up uh, playing piano. I started with guitar and I still do play guitar, but now I love to play piano and I like to listen to my favorite songs and then try to try to play them myself or just try to sometimes write my own music and drawing. I, I, a lot of my good friends are, are art, artists and they try to help me as much yeah, as they can. Yeah. I'm getting better, better but I'm still not, not the greatest, <laughs> but I like to be able to draw like some of my favorite characters from my favorite uh, animes or sh shows and movies and be able to maybe put my little, uh, my own little spin on them to create them like, and sometimes create my own characters. So what are some of the characters and shows and things that you, you like? And, and as far as the music, what's some of the music that you like to listen to? So music, I am, I'm a sort of an old soul, yeah, as my yeah. parents like to say. I, I like too, 80s, yeah. 80s and 90s. Like I love listening to Journey, uh, Billy Joel, Elton John. I went to even Elton John's like Farewell, Yellow Brick oh, yeah. Road. Yeah. And that was such a cool experience for me. And I love to listen to like that, that older side of music and then yeah. see how much it changes from generation to generation, seeing how the eighties music is different from the nineties and how that's different from the two thousands music. And that's probably one of my favorite things. And, and then drawing, I love to draw like video game characters that I, that I like to play, or I'll even draw like characters from animated movies or, or shows like one of my favorite animes is Konosuba. So I like to draw characters from that. And, and I just, and then most of the time I just like to, to draw things that are original. That's cool. So you like to create, not only appreciate what's already created, but you like to create your own things, which is cool, huh? Yeah. I like to, to be able to, take inspiration from what i'm either listening to with music or i'm seeing on movies and tv shows and be able to turn that and use that and make my own thing from it just like how the artists take the water bottle and make their own sculpture from it i'm putting right. my own little spin on it so what are some other things you know looking ahead to the future for you connor with all these different things you have happening which is very very cool and we're definitely going to have you back on the show and keep the porch light on for you like i always say to all the guests and keep me posting all the cool things you're doing what are some other things you're excited about and some other things that you hope to do in the future so i do have a really big uh, project that's coming out soon that I can't say much about, but I'm almost done writing the script and then we're going to get it produced and, and it's going to be really cool. And I'm hoping to grow my, my horror podcast more with Max Bartos and be able to, to show people more about horror and more about these, uh, our favorite horror movie shows and do more deep dives about them and be able to grow that with the horror horror fans and, and then there's a, a couple of other things I have ready for with my friends that I can't wait for as well. There's the socials. There's the website, folks. We've been showing that throughout uh, the Gym Masters show uh, series here uh, on this episode and check it all out. You know, speaking of horror, you know, day to day horror is just trying to drive on the highways these days <laughs> with the road rage and all the crazy stuff. Just, just set up your cameras and just let it roll and you'll see horror. You won't even have to produce anything. Just let the cameras roll, uh, get a dash cam and just drive around and you'll see some incredible, I mean, it's you'll see some credible people that you, you won't believe like actually exist. Sometimes I'll literally exist? go on YouTube and watch like dash cam stuff. And be how like, do they, no drive, way real. how'd they get the license? How did <laughs> this person do this? It's unbelievable. It really, really is. Um, this was really cool. My friend, this was a great conversation and, uh, you know, I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did as well. And I wish you nothing but uh, continued success. And, and somebody that, you know, talk about old school, legendary comedian. My aunt collected dolls and she had a room in her home in Connecticut filled with thousands of dollars of, of all kinds of dolls. And one of them is uh, George Burns. The <laughs> <laughs> there he is and uh, he's got a cigar he's got his martini he's got his wow. uh yeah and this got passed down to me in the family and we did a nostalgic episode on the gym master show 
series and the audience, the, the Lovities, as we call them, the Jim Master Show Lovities, fell in love with him and the old school. So accurate. I, look at him. I tell you, it, it's like, just a, it's incredible, isn't it? Um, he's got the cigar and he hangs down below. He's sort of like an associate producer. He has his little martini. He's got his cigar <laughs> and, and, you know, he's got he's fully dressed. He's got the shoes and everything. It's a real collectible. We're going to pass down to me. And he thoroughly enjoyed this conversation as well. Mr. George Burns in the house. <laughs> <laughs> kind of cool, huh? I can't like that's so accurate. That's oh. <laughs> It's there's crazy a, to see those. There's a lot. Yeah, we have the I Dream of Genie bottle here. I've got oh, the I Dream of Genie. We got the I Dream of Genie bottle. We've got um, uh, Gilligan from Gilligan's Island. His wife, oh. uh, Dreamer Denver. Bob Denver was the actor that played Gilligan. She, and Dreamer was a guest on the show multiple times. And she's a dear friend of our show and, and of mine. And she said, Jim, you know, with all these things you have, including George Burns, you have to have a Gilligan. So she sent me the Gilligan and then Don Fullerlove, who starred as Mayor Goldie Wilson in the Back to the Future movies, passed through the show. And everybody can see these episodes. You know, you can binge watch all these episodes. You can see this episode again, too, with Connor as my guest on our YouTube channel, Jim Masters TV. But Don Fullerlove from Back to the Future was on and he sent along a Mayor Goldie Wilson, Don Fullerlove bobblehead. <laughs> And they're all here sprinkled on set, which is uh, which is kind of cool. And uh, a splash of history. Yeah. And the little mini me that's over there sent by Maureen in Arizona, one of our viewers. She said, there's Mr. Lovity right there. And I said, I love it. This stuff's cool. You know, you got to have fun. Uh, you got to have fun with life. And uh, it was really, really cool having you on the show. And again, let me show you the socials and everything else, the website and um Connor, I hope you enjoy the time with me as much as I have with uh, you. This was awesome. It was it was really fun to be able to chat with you, and I and I hope to be able to do this again. Absolutely, for everybody watching, if you enjoyed this episode, we encourage you to do uh, just a little homework. It's real easy. Give this episode a like on our YouTube channel, Jim Masters TV, the thumbs up, make sure you click the thumbs up, <laughs> thumbs up, leave a comment on the YouTube channel as well, uh, right underneath the episode that uh, helps us. And don't forget to uh, also subscribe to the YouTube channel, which costs nothing. You just hit subscribe. You're part of the Jim Master Show Lovity Squad here of uh, the family of viewers who watch and enjoy our show. Thanks to everybody commenting in the Lovity Hall chat room. We appreciate that as well. And Connor Dean, thanks for stopping by the show. We'll keep the light on for you. You're welcome. Thank back. you for having me. Uh, the pleasure is <laughs> all mine. And uh, you're still you're still can't get over. I came up with that George Burns style, huh? <laughs> <laughs> There he is. There he is. <laughs> it's like the, the cigar too is just really funny. The whole, the, I mean, there it is. I know it's kind of it's cool, isn't it? The amount of detail I, they put into those dolls is just it's crazy. Unreal, yeah. And she was a my uh, aunt Lillian was a serious collector, and they got passed down to me. And he's he's now part of the show. He says no turn him back. We love it. And the guests too, they're surprised all of a sudden. Uh, some guests who, who who watch our series too, they're like. They, they want the George Burns to appear. They're like, where's George? So I said, oh, don't worry. He's coming. He's coming. <laughs> He'll be here. He'll be here. He'll be here. He's just he's refilling putting his, his makeup on. <laughs> he's, he's getting another cigar and he's refilling his martini glass. Absolutely. Connor, you be well. Spread the word about our show to everybody. Uh, you know, it takes a village and it was really awesome having you here. And if you know other folks you think like to pop on, spread the word. Love to have them as well. And uh, keep up the incredible work and everything you're doing. Thank and you. it's a... Uh, pleasure to cross paths here on the gym master show thank you so much for having me it, it was a real blast to be able to be here same here as well you take care we'll chat again soon okay my friend all right thank all you right. all right Bye. take care cheers as he fades to black <laughs> really cool again there's the socials as well connor dean stopping by the gym master show entertainment lifestyle celebrity talk show series where we're bringing back the lost art of conversation hey gang if you enjoyed the episode do give it a like on our youtube channel at thumbs up like leave a comment for us as well we would really appreciate that and don't forget to subscribe to the youtube channel as well and again Connor is really, he's a rising star. He's got so many irons in the fire. And I'm so glad we were able to put this together and welcome him to the show. This is the first time that uh, you learned about him. 
that's cool. That's great. We can follow him and his, uh, his great career as well. We appreciate him stopping in from uh, Los Angeles, California. This was really, really cool. And again, we showed you a lot of cool things. You may remember, of course, being a cool cat. Absolutely. I mean, there's such a cult following for that series. And of course, 911, we talked about it, that as well. And uh, Jingle Trails and all the other cool things that are coming out, you know, things that he's working on that he's also uh, producing, which is cool. And of course, as I mentioned, he loves tennis and he's a professional uh, tennis player as well. You probably love these shots, right? Yeah, going back in time a little bit. And he's even walked the runway in New York City, which is cool stuff as well. Yeah, and these careers, these industries, we, we got to do a lot of different things, as I always have. And I've shared it with you on the show, working in television, radio, stage, and film, as I do professionally. It's what you do. And if you get a chance to love what you do, do what you love. It's the absolute best. And there's the, the logo for the cast as well. His cast, I love it. Keep an eye, an eye out for that. Hey, gang, this was awesome. I'm your host, Jim Masters. We don't say goodbye around here. We say see you later. Ciao, cheers, slancha, hejda. We say sayonara, hasta la vista, vida zane, uh, moi loop, cheerio, be well, take care. Don't forget to love one another, take care of one another. Spread the word about our show. If this was your first time watching the Jim Masters Show Entertainment Lifestyle Celebrity Talk Show Series, come back and see us again. And don't forget, you can binge watch almost a thousand episodes on our youtube channel jim masters tv you can also find me on all the socials you can find me on facebook instagram and twitter at jim masters tv so check it all out appreciate you being with us we'll see you on the next episode gang take care be well and thanks for stopping by the jim masters show live series we'll see you next time cheers mm -hmm.